Spooky South Coast, Tim Weisberg here, along with science advisor Matt Moniz. And uh, we have Andrew Lake of Greenville Paranormal Research joining us here in the Spooky Studio as well tonight. We are so glad to be back on the air because it's been a while. It's been about three weeks since we've been here in the Spooky Studio. There was a show that Chris Balzano hosted from uh, from his home in sunny Florida. Uh, that was, uh, I think... Uh, the 25th of August, when we were at Lizzie Borden's for Dead of Summer. And so there hasn't been a show since then, but we're glad to be back. A little rusty with the technology, but uh, we're getting there. We'll, we'll fight our way through it. We are broadcasting both here on WBSM and on Spooky TV at SpookySouthCoast.com. So if you want to see what's going on in the studio, just go to SpookySouthCoast.com, and you can see for yourself. We've got uh, a multiple camera set up. You can see our lovely faces. Um, I notice Moniz is uh, a little shaggy. I'm a little shaggy. You know, I'm not as shaggy as you were in those pictures from New Hampshire. I yeah. thought maybe you'd moved up there permanently and we're like now living in the White Mountains. <laughs> no. But uh, we, we are glad to be back here talking about the paranormal as we are usually each and every Saturday night. It looks like the Red Sox uh, will not be playing much October baseball, which means we'll be here all through the Halloween season. And we're also uh, coming up with probably some, some of our finest shows heading into that. I mean, we're going to have some just some outstanding guests coming on uh, this week, of course. Tonight we'll be talking with Rick Hayes, who's a longtime Spooky South Coast favorite, paranormal communications consultant slash psychic medium. He uses both titles now. He used to just use paranormal communications consultant, but now he's added the psychic medium back into it. But it's all essentially the same thing. He can help you communicate with those who have passed on. And he calls it life's gift, and he's been blessed with it. And he would like to use his abilities to help you connect with loved ones who may have passed on. So later on in the program, we will open up the phone lines for you to do just that. Uh, but before that, we're going to catch up with Rick, find out what he's been up to since he was last on the show. I think it was uh, the beginning of 2011 that we last had him on, so it's been a while. And uh, also, coming up in the coming weeks, we're going to be talking uh, Bigfoot next week with Eric Altman. We're going to be talking about uh, different beasts with Linda Godfrey. We're going to be talking about uh, other spirit mediums and, and their abilities with, uh, with our good friends Tiffany Rice and Stephanie Burke, who will be at our Legend Trips events, which I'll let you know about in just a minute. And uh, also we have, uh, I'm really excited for this show, October 13th, Jackie Barrett makes her return to Spooky South Coast. And anybody that's listened to her first appearance on the show <laughs> and some of the FCC fines we incurred <laughs> as that interview wound on, uh, it, it's going to be an exciting night because we're going to be talking about Amityville that night. Her new book is called The Devil I Know. It's all about her interactions with Ronnie Butch DeFeo Jr. And in the book, she tells Ronnie's side of the story probably more completely than it's ever been told. Uh, it's up to you if you want to believe it or not, but we'll present it for you that night. So uh, it, it should be a, a really, really spooky chat that night because I still remember the first time we talked to her and uh, she was telling us about uh, a message that Ronnie had for me and that freaked me out quite a bit. So we'll have to see where that goes. <laughs> well, I know I won't be getting much sleep that night. I just noticed that my headphones seem to be bouncing around in stereo, but we broadcast in mono on WBSM, so it should be fine. And... Uh, but, but tonight's show is going to be special. Tonight's show is going to be another one of those times when I'm sure, you know, Rick Hayes will amaze. I'm sure he'll get people uh, scratching their heads and thinking twice about what we call mediumship. We've all experienced those moments in our pursuit of the paranormal, uh, ourselves in this room, myself, Moniz and Andy, where we've said, you know, we have a healthy dose of skepticism for this, but... There are times when we shake our heads, and we just can't explain away what happened. And Rick Hayes was the first one to ever put me in that situation, so hopefully he can do that for you as well. But again, we'll be doing the, the readings in the second hour of the show, so after 11 p.m. So uh, stay tuned for that. 
Now, I had briefly alluded to our upcoming Legend Trips events. It's been, <laughs> like I said, it's been three weeks since we've been on the air. In that time, we've actually announced a new Legend Trips event that uh, wasn't really on our schedule, but we had the opportunity to arise to do what we think is going to be a very special, very cool event right here in New Bedford. Well, we're in Fairhaven, but right here in the New Bedford area. And it, it, we just couldn't pass it up. You know, Je Jeff and I were talking about it, and we're like, oh, we already have Haunted History Night coming October 20th in Wareham, Massachusetts, if you want to investigate the Fearing Tavern, the One Room Schoolhouse, the Old Methodist Meeting House, and the Union Chapel, that whole little historic block of Wareham. You know, that event's coming up on October 20th, and we really don't like to have too many events clustered together. We like to give people a chance to, to have a break between them, and we need a break between them a lot of the times, too. But the phone call came. The message came, actually, it was, uh, it was from a good friend of ours who helped set it all up, and she was telling us that the Four Table really wants to do something with us in October. Can we get away with doing a second event? We debated it back and forth, and finally we decided, you know what, we can't pass this up. To investigate Fort Tabor, to bring people in there and conduct a paranormal investigation of a Civil War era fort right here in our own backyard, we couldn't pass up that chance. And so thus began the birth of Supernatural Siege at Fort Tabor. It's coming uh, October 12th. Now that's going to be a Friday night event. So it's going to be a little bit different than our usual Legend Trips events, which are on Saturday nights, and they preempt Spooky South Coast. So we're actually going to be out there on Friday, October 12th. And we'll still be able to come back in here for the October 13th show, because nothing was stopping me from talking to Jackie Barrett again. So <laughs> if you want to get on board for, for any of these events, of course, you can just go to SpookySouthCoast.com or LegendTrips.com and purchase tickets and find out more information. But the good thing about doing it on a Friday night is... A lot of people's weekends were already stacked up for the Halloween season. But not too many things happen on Friday nights. It's usually the Saturday nights that are booked up. So even if you had prior commitments, you know, you can still sneak in this Friday night trip. And for $99, you're going to get dinner. You're going to get lectures. You're going to get a chance to go into parts of Fort Tabor that the public are just not allowed into. There's, of course, the fort itself, which only opens up to the public twice a year for battle reenactments. You're going to be able to get in there and investigate the first floor of the fort itself, the fort proper, because the other floors aren't really safe to be bringing people through. And we're also going to get to go into the three-story uh, Battery Milliken, which is going to be <laughs> amazing uh, to, to take people underground like that and to have a chance to investigate these spots. And, and just, it's 47 acres, and we have the run of the place for the entire night. So for $99, you can't go wrong. Uh, and of course, a portion of all proceeds go toward helping maintain and, and restore Fort Tabor. So uh, if you want to buy those tickets, you can do that at legendtrips.com. And, of course, the Haunted History Night tickets are also on sale at legendtrips.com as well. So why, why not just hang out with us two weekends in a row? You won't get sick of us, I promise. And the other good news is that we've actually booked a, a great hotel rate for anybody that wants to come to these events right here in Fairhaven, actually right across the street, the Hampton Inn of Fairhaven has uh, graciously given us a rate of $79 per night for either event. That's beautiful. It's about half off their normal rate. And uh, this is a Hampton Inn, of course, which is owned by Hilton. I mean, this is first-rate stuff. I mean, we're not sticking you in a flea bag motel here. This is prime accommodations. Even though you're not getting in until 3 in the morning and you're probably getting up at 9 and heading out, <laughs> at least you know you're going to have a nice, comfortable bed and a nice, clean, safe spot to sleep in. So that is uh, $79 for that room rate uh, can be booked by letting them know that you're buying a ticket through the Legend Trips block. But please remember, we do check that the reservations are for people that are buying tickets. So please buy your tickets first and then make your room reservation. And that rate is available for both the October 12th and October 20th events. And uh, if you're coming from the north or from the west at 495 for the Wareham event on October 20th, you can also book a night at the Days Inn of Middleborough. They're giving us a special rate of $70 for the night. So if you're coming from that direction, you have the opportunity to stay there. So whatever way you're going home, we're trying to get you a little bit closer to there before you know, you have to get up in the morning. So now if you need any more details on all of this, again, legendtrips.com is the website. You can join the mailing list there. You can join the new mailing list on spookysouthcoast.com, which I've been tinkering, tinkering around with over the last few days, and we've made some adjustments, and we have an all-new newsletter campaign for Spooky South Coast coming out of there, so make sure you sign up. And uh, then, of course, 
if you have any questions beyond that, you can always just email me, Tim at SpookySouthCoast.com, and uh, I will get you all the details. So I know, Andy, you were telling me that you have something cool coming up. Yeah, I do. I uh, just wanted to let everybody know that on the, uh, the 28th of uh, September, which is a Friday night, I'm going to be at uh, the Spirit Connections office with uh, Tiffany Rice, which is located uh, in Pembroke, Mass., at 55 Corporate, Corporate Park Drive. Uh, it's uh, going to be a lecture on uh, my experience as a ghost hunter in southern New England. Starts at uh, 7 o'clock, um, $10 uh, for admission. I will, of course, have copies of my book in the, uh, the documentary, um, The Legends of Dolly Cole, with me. Anybody wants to uh, purchase them. And uh, all the proceeds from this talk are going to go towards uh, renting some digging equipment for a... Uh, investigation I've been doing in Situate, Rhode Island. Uh, we need to dig a hole to find out if uh, four spirit mediums and a child with autism are, are correct, that there is something sinister buried uh, on the property. They all tell us the same thing. And uh, I can't let this go anymore. I've been doing this for three years, this investigation. And uh, we just need to raise some money to rent a backhoe and we got somebody to operate it and we're going to dig it up and see if there is something eight feet down. That's uh, what one of the uh, spirit mediums was told. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a very interesting case. But if you come to the talk, I'm going to uh, fill in more details on it. And I think for the Halloween season, you'll be very entertained. Uh, awesome. And what was the date again on that? Uh, that is the 28th which is a uh, of September, which is a Friday night, 7 o'clock. So make sure you check that out. We'll put it on the spooky calendar. Uh, also, just to let everybody know, I'll be doing some library lectures coming up. Uh, I'll be October 10th at the Mattapoisett Free Library at 7 p.m., uh, I'm sorry, I think that one's 6 p.m. I should probably double check that so I make sure I show up on time. <laughs> on October 11th, I'll be at the Wareham Free Library at 7 p.m. And on uh, the 24th, oh, I'm already all confused. I'm already, ma I should really write this down before I read it. I'm sorry. October 10th at 7 p.m. at the Bourne Free Library. October 11th at the Wareham Free Library. October 24th at the Bourne Library again. And then uh, October the last week of October on the Tuesday at the Mattapoisa Public Library. I'll, I'll have it all yeah, up on the website. I've got a few of them lining up for my publisher, too. <laughs> it's it's like kind of got to write them down or I'll yeah, forget. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to remember them off the top of my head, but uh, I'll be doing a, a bunch of different lectures this year. We're going to be doing some Paranormal 101 at the Bourne Library, which is actually reported to be haunted, so you're going to get a chance to check it out for yourselves. Uh, we're actually, we have the chance to go in and do a pre-investigation. Uh, I, I set a date for that. I'll have to work on that with you guys. And, uh, and then uh, also... Uh, I'll be talking about haunted objects. I'll be talking about ghosts of the South Coast. I'll be talking about Lizzie Borden. So there's going to be all kinds of things going on. So I'll have it all up on SpookySouthCoast.com, and I promise as we get closer, I'll have all my dates right. <laughs> as long as I as long as I show up correctly, we're doing well. Also, a couple other things we want to let you know about: the Conscious Spirit Paranormal Group and the Mirror Magazine are teaming up uh, for an event. Uh, they're both based in New Hampshire, and they're having an event at the beautiful and historic Crotched Mountain, is it Crotched or cro Crotched? Crotched? Crotched Mountain? Golf Club and Resort in Francistown, New Hampshire. Uh, of course, the featured guest will be Jeff Belanger, our good friend. Uh, he, uh, he, al he also, uh, you know, in, in case you didn't know this, he's uh, also the part of Legend Trips as well. Yeah, he does this funny um, TV show, I think, uh, Andy and I have... Uh Encountered it it's once or twice. So I, I think it's called. Of course, I hosted the thirty odd minutes. But I, I'm wondering if, like, we have to do like this whole full disclosure thing, like when the New York Times owned part of the Red Sox and <laughs> the New York Times owned part of the Boston Globe. Like the Boston Globe had to keep saying the Boston Red Sox, which are owned by the New York Times, which in part owns the Boston Globe. If we have to be like Jeff Belanger, in part owner of Legend Trips, in cooperation with Spooky South Coast. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> he's going to be the featured uh, speaker there. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, Plan to arrive around 5 p.m. They're going to be uh, giving you a delicious buffet dinner at 6 p.m. And the seminar begins at 7 p.m. Again, that is the Conscious Spirit Paranormal Group and the Mirror Magazines. It's a Halloween kickoff event at the Old Toll Booth Tavern at the Crotchet Mountain Golf Club and Resort in Francistown, New Hampshire on Saturday, September 29th. And uh, a little bit later on, too, I'll have uh, some information about a fundraiser uh, to uh, defeat bullying that we'll, uh, we'll promote as well. So why don't we take a break right now, though, because when we come back, we're going to be getting Rick Hayes on the phone. We're going to catch up with Rick and find out what's been going on with him since we had him on the program last. And then coming up in the next hour, it'll be your chance to connect with a loved one who has passed on 
or maybe somebody that wasn't so loved, but you still need to make a connection with, uh, he'll be able to help you do that. And during the course of the interview, if you want to check out Rick's information or see his website, lifesgift.com, you can do so just by going to SpookySouthCoast.com, and when the slider comes through, click on Rick's picture, and that'll take you right to the Spooky South Coast page on Rick Hayes, where you'll find links to his website and a whole lot more. So we're working on making the website a little bit more than just it. You know, I've, I've finally gotten to the point where I don't screw it up, <laughs> Every time I update it, so now we're looking to build a little bit more. So uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have more with our guest, Rick Hayes, right here on the one, the only, the, I think, the awesomest paranormal show, Spooky South Coast. The awesomest paranormal show, Spooky South Coast. The awesomest paranormal show, Spooky South Coast. Better than seeing our delicious new popcorn chicken. device tea. Twisted Tea wants to know, after mowing the lawn at a barbecue on a really hot day, think about that same satisfying glass of iced tea, but with a kick. Twisted Tea is a hard iced tea that's made from beer, but tastes like real iced tea. And nothing satisfies like an ice cold Twisted Tea. The next time you and your friends are looking for some refreshment, but you need a little kick, grab a Twisted Tea. The refreshing hard iced tea that tastes like real iced tea. Twisted Tea Brewing Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. Drink responsibly. At Advance Auto Parts, we don't do anything just part way. We go full throttle. We don't just sell batteries. We install them fast and free with purchase on most vehicles. Other places can charge you 20 bucks to install your battery. Not us. We'll install rain or shine or that weird thing where it's sunny with clouds but you're still getting rained on. Free battery installation even in weird weather only at Advance Auto Parts. Service is our best part. Advance Auto Parts. See store for details. Can you tell if the surfaces in this kitchen are crawling with bacteria that could cause chronic arthritis? Listen. Can't, can you? You can't see it either. Wash surfaces, utensils, and hands frequently with soapy water while preparing food, especially when handling raw meats or eggs. Raw food may contain bacteria that can make you very sick, or worse. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year, and roughly 3,000 will die. But you can keep your family safer by cleaning with soap and water as you go. Learn more about this and other important information. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. That's foodsafety.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council. If this radio spot were Nikki Baker's life, it would start pretty normal, like this. But, but then, right, right around here, her life would take a bad turn with mother abusing her. And about this fine, Nikki would drop out of high school and run away. Here, she'd be forced to work two jobs struggling to support herself and her daughter. She'd feel stuck. 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 But then, she'd decide to earn her GED diploma. She'd take my prep classes. Study every night and feel unstuck. Because she'd finally hear someone say, Nikki Baker, come up and get your GED diploma. If this radio spot were Nikki Baker's life, the ending wouldn't be the ending at all. It would be the beginning of a brighter future. For free info about GED test prep classes, call 1-877-38-YOUR-GED or visit yourged.org. GED is a registered trademark of the American Council on Education. Brought to you by Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Hello. Hey, man. What? You up? No. Wake up. I need to talk to you. I think your house is haunted. Hey, come on. It's 2.30 in the morning. I can't sleep in here, man. I'm scared. Uh, 
Alright, welcome back to the show. Tim Weisberg here along with science advisor Matt Moniz and Andrew Lake of Greenville Paranormal Research who's along with us. And uh, we are getting ready to talk to one of our favorite guests of all time, Rick Hayes. He's a paranormal communications consultant. He is also the founder of Life's Gift. And you've seen him on the Possessed by the Booth Brothers there. It's uh, it's frequently rerun on the Sci-Fi Channel. And uh, again, I mentioned at the top of the show, he's <coughs> excuse me, he was the first person with psychic and mediumship abilities that uh, ever really impressed me. And I know that he's impressed the Spooky South Coast audience over the years, so much so that he's one of our uh, most requested guests. And we're happy to bring him back onto the show. Good evening, Rick. Welcome back to Spooky South Coast. How you been? Hey, hey, guys. It's great to be back, and uh, wow, uh, it seems like it's been a while. It has <laughs> been, and, and it's it's always too long uh, before we have a chance to talk to you, because there's always so much going on with you that there's there's new things happening all the time with, with yourself and with Life's Gift. Well, I'm literally sitting in a lobby in a hotel room tonight. I'm on the road, and uh, I'm near Indianapolis, Indiana, and, uh, you know, I've got a, a, I've been... This year we've been saying that Rick Hayes live, is living life supernaturally, and that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I am living life supernaturally and loving every minute of it. Now, when you say that, though, what exactly do you mean by living life supernaturally? Well, it, it's, a, it's a line that, we, that I feel that uh, has, a lot of informa- you know, has a lot of definition for me. Uh, I, you know, living life is the key to life. It is living the life. And then supernatural, life is super. Life is na- it's a natural, uh, everyday, uh, get the most value out of your life you can each day. And so that's what Rick Hayes is doing. He's living life supernaturally. And, of course, at the same time, it's, you know, with, uh, with these abilities around me, I get, I get the opportunity to connect with loved ones who are still around us. And, and uh, if you just, you know, I, I just, I've got an amazing, uh, it's amazing each and every day. And uh, so I'm living my life supernaturally. <laughs> and, and the best part about it is, with your abilities, you never lack for a good conversation. A- absolutely, you know. And but sometimes you have to, you know, I have to be a little bit careful because everybody thinks I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Now, Rick, I, I know that uh, when we first had you on the show, uh, I want to say it was in our it was in our first year, two thousand six, I believe. Uh, and when we first had you on the the program. You were just starting to really embrace the public side of utilizing your abilities, and now here we are, you know, almost seven years later, and it seems like now you've become at least more comfortable with your role. I mean, obviously, people look at you and they say, "Well, here's here's a guy who's taken his abilities and he's been able to take it out to the public and and offer it as a service to help people." But it was a struggle for you. I mean, it wasn't easy for you to to bring this out out into the open. It really was. I mean, it was. Uh you know, as I've shared with you on the shows before, and first of all, and first I want to thank you again for bringing me, giving me the opportunity to, to be a part of Spooky South Coast. I really feel like I'm a part of the family, and uh, but uh, and, and uh, thank you again. And and but you know, it was it was a, a personal struggle because you know, I, as I shared with you, I grew up with these abilities. I feel we all have the have abilities to know that our loved ones are around us. It's just as we're as I was growing up, but you know, just as with many. Uh, we begin to block them because we feel it's imagination and coincidence. And so I grew up with uh, basically keeping it to myself just because I didn't want everybody to think there was something wrong with me or I was weird, you know. So uh, I, I kept it to myself other, other than my family until uh, the fall of 2002. And that's when I had the experience where I had a dear friend after sharing for the first time outside my family. Uh, uh, I, gave, I shared with her a message from a loved one. And that's her statement to me, as, as I've shared with you, you know, as, as my friend, that, um, you know, she made this statement to me, you know, you're just being very selfish for keeping this to yourself. And throughout my life, I never looked at it as being selfish, you know. I just looked at it as I didn't want everybody to think there was something wrong with me. And after I, after I you know, thought about it throughout the night, and I really prayed about it, and, and I just realized that I was being selfish. I was given a gift. You know, I feel like if you're given any kind of skill, any kind of talent in your life, you should share it. And uh, so in 2003, I began sharing these abilities. And it's, it's, been, uh, it's been amazing life, you know, continues to be amazing life. And I truly feel I'm living my life purpose. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an exciting day each and every day. We all have, a, have exciting days. Yeah, but it's, it's different when you can 
you know, almost realize what you probably feel has been the purpose of your life. And when you can finally uh, make that connection and, and say, okay, this is what I'm destined to do, it makes it a lot easier to have a, a happy and fulfilled life. Yeah, and I've, I've had many, they always, you know, they share with me, they'll say, they'll say, you know, they'll, they'll say, when, you know, I know I have a reason, I know I have a purpose, but I, I, I just feel like I can't find it, and, you know, I've struggled and tried to, tried to see what my purpose was in life. Well, you know, I feel like we try to, what we try to do is we try to put a time limit on it. We, don't, we feel like we're in our 20s or we're in our 40s or we're in our, even our 50s or 60s, and we don't feel like we found our purpose path yet that, uh, you know, we failed to do so. Your purpose may not be, you know, maybe until your 70s. And just like for me, I'm not going to share my age because I'm younger than what I, what my actual earthly age feels. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, I, I truly, uh, you know, when I found my purpose and, and was given the acknowledgement of my purpose, I knew at that time, I thought, this is my path of purpose. And when you find that, when you find that in your life, you just you just know it is, and you just it changes your life. You just feel more positive about things in life, and uh, you know I share with with children in in schools when a door opens, a door of a purpose or a door of opportunity opens. Don't just stand there and look at the door and say why did it open. You know walk through it because there's a reason why that door opened for you. It's give you direction and purpose in your life. And even finding that purpose, I'm I'm sure that the journey to discovering it is part of. Uh, part of the overall plan for the purpose. I mean, if if it came easy to everybody, then what would be the point? Absolutely, and and, and I'm a I'm a very good example. I, I you know with these abilities, uh, again, I you know it took me many 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 years. Uh, even though I knew I have them, had them, I you know I did not recognize them as being a part of my purpose path, a part of my purpose in life. And it took something, just just a statement. To, to to bring to me, it's almost like hit, getting hit by a two before in the back of your head. When she said that, it was like, this is it. And as soon as I recognized that I was given these abilities for a reason, I was given these abilities to also be a part of my purpose path, it, it changed my life overnight. And I, you know, I, I'm very, very confident in saying that I'm in my path of purpose now. Now, just give everybody a little bit of a refresher on, on how this ability works for you. Uh, the idea is, of course, that when somebody, somebody speaks to you, they want to make a connection with a loved one who has passed on. Exactly what is that process for you? Well, it's, uh, um, you know, I, as you know, you, you've shared it on the, on the, at the beginning that I'm a life consultant, a paranormal consultant. Uh, I've been called many, many things in the last 12 years. Uh, a psychic, a psychic medium, a life coach, a life consultant. And I just share with everyone, just call me to dinner. I'll be happy. Okay? There you go. <laughs> so I really told, uh, you know, titles, titles. But, uh, you know, for me, um, the way that I, I look at it this way, that our loved ones are in spirit, and they know we're still in our physical body, and we're still utilizing our, our physical senses. And so basically what they do for me and just with any, everyone else is to acknowledge their presence around us, they will utilize our physical senses. And, for example, I, I can see them. Uh, I can see them in different ways. Uh, for example, I can see them in, as most of the time as an elongated light, very bright in the center. I call it the light of spirit. It will be a nearer person that I need to, you know, that I will be connecting with in a, in a, at an event or at a group group gallery reading or as an individual consultation. Uh, another re another way is what many would call a shadow. I call it a light shadow. Uh, they take the form of a person, and I, there's light around it and through it. Uh, there's an, another way that where they actually will appear to me. This happens in a lot of historical places. Uh, just as it did in Gettysburg just a few, uh, just a couple months ago, they will actually appear to me as, it, as they were in their physical form at, at, when they were here in their physical body. So they'll do that, and then, uh, you know, the majority of the time, what I will also, I will hear them. And as I share with everyone that, you know, when they, when they talk with me, they talk just like they always talk. I had someone the other, just recently, they said, well, when they're, in the, when they're talking with you and they're in your spirit, do they, do they like, talk? With, do they say words like thou and thee and shall? You know, it's like, no, they talk like they always talk. You know, they're not going to just, you know, all of a sudden start saying thee and thou and all that. So 
uh, but um, you know, so but they're in their body of spirit now. They're no longer in their physical voice, and they understand I'm still my physical body and physical voice. So when they talk with me, they will talk like they always talk, and I hear them. I hear them what I feel called my spiritual thought, my spiritual my spiritual ears, and I will hear them and I will acknowledge them, and they will. Sometimes I only hear maybe one or two words, but I've learned to put it in a sentence for them. So that's another way. And then, of course, there's there's other validations as well, such as physical signs, or I call them physical validations. There's just many ways that they connect with me. And, uh, you know, the key is, again, the key is what they're doing is not to scare me, not to harm me, not to, not to frighten me, but they're saying, hey, I'm here. We're going to help you to acknowledge our presence here so we can, we can share the message with you. Now, we talk all the time on, on this show about the changes in people's perceptions of the paranormal, that uh, over the last decade or so, people have become more open to the idea of uh, interacting with spirits in a paranormal investigation format or, or having a paranormal experience outside of that format. And how has it been for you now, on uh, the way that you do things, uh, have people become more open to having these spiritual experiences with loved ones who yeah, passed on? Absolutely, and it's great. I mean, it's it's been very, very, uh, it's been very, very exciting for me just to see how individuals are becoming more open to the thought of there is more than life here, and there is a paranormal. There is a there is a life, a spirit. There are spirits around us, and I think part of that is because of shows like yours uh, has has allowed us to 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 maybe to look at things differently. Uh, the media has helped tremendously, good and bad in some areas, but mostly there is a lot of good behind it. Um, the television shows, for example, has opened it up. But I think where it all comes down to is that the individuals are becoming more open. They're, they're starting to say, you know, this might be, this might be, this might be real. Mm -hmm. And whereas, you know, I use the example of, of that, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago, there was a lot of skepticism about this, about the paranormal. And I share the example is that if, if 75 years ago, if you and I were, set, you know, standing there and, and someone walked up to us and I looked at that person and I said, I can call, I can talk to someone on this little box within in three seconds, I can talk to someone that's halfway across the world and I can hear them just as if they were standing right here. Well, they would look at me and, you know, 75 years ago and say, well, I don't believe that. That can't be true. There's no way. Well, today it's very believable because we call it a cell phone. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it's, there's an, and that's a very good example that I, I try to utilize as an example for the same with the paranormal industry. You know, what we know today, 60, 70 years ago, because of, again, because of in paranormal investigators going out there and saying, we're going to find answers because of individuals that, you know, just individuals starting to open their selves up and, and uh, connecting with their own abilities and, and they're recognizing that the experiences they're having as being something more than just here, uh, I, think, I think what we're seeing is we're seeing a transition where it's going to become, we're going to learn a lot more. I'm, I'm sharing this with you. We're going to learn a whole lot more that, uh, and you're going to see more technology come out that's going to even validate this even more. And individuals themselves are going to become more and more open. And uh, it's not so much, I look at it this way, it's, it's not so much religion, it's spiritual. And there is a difference. And more and more people are becoming more uh, connecting, connecting with saying, hey, there's something spiritual. There's, there, there is spirits. There, are, there is spirituality. Well, if you look back through history, I mean, you look at the eras that we had, you know, we had, uh, you know, the, the Enlightenment, we have the Age of Reason, we have uh, the spiritualist movement combined with the later skepticism toward the spiritualists. You know, it seems like these things go in cycles. You have a period where people are open, spiritual, and more accepting of it, and then there becomes a period of a heightened skepticism following that. And I just hope that we're not going to get into that cycle again where, you know, as we make these advances and as we have a better understanding of what's going on, all of a sudden we're going to get kind of a shutdown across the board uh, from those outside of it who no longer want to hear anything about it. Yeah, I, I, I really, I, I really don't see us going back to that. I, I do feel we might get into a, 
you know, we might get into a different uh, part of this where there may be a, a what you what you would you know call it as a shutdown, but I wouldn't say a complete shutdown. I think there'll be, and it's and it's all good to me because if if someone comes through, you know, comes across and says, here's here's proof that there isn't there isn't anything paranormal, then all it does it feeds us to give even more reasons to prove that there is paranormal, mm -hmm. and. And so all it's going to do is it's going to drive us even more. Of course, and all of this just falls under the category of we're kind of stuck in the mindset of what we currently think. And it seems like the more we delve into this and, and the closer we get to finding out answers about it, we need to kind of change the way that we think. And then we'll have a better understanding of it. Yeah, and again, you know, I, go, I, I talk a lot about paranormal investigators because I, I just I respect the, the investigators out there that are doing what they're doing. Um, but... You know the technology, um, Jason. Jason just on a show just recently on Ghost Center just recently on this season uh, premiered some new equipment they're trying, and you know, and I think what's going on is we're saying this this equipment is working. It's it's helping us to either debunk or to prove. But what can we do to find what equipment can we now create to go one step more? And so it just gives us the ambition to, to find answers. And really, if you think about it, that's what, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. It is, if we knew everything, you know, I have individuals say, does, he, does loved ones ever share with you what it's like over there? They, they do in, in one respective, they, they do, but they also respect me in understanding that I, I truly feel that we, as in this earth, in our physical bodies, would not truly understand what it is to be a spirit. We do not truly understand what it is to be on the other side, per se. But, you know, we just know it's there. And once, you know, I share with everyone, do we know? Do we know what's there? Do we know it's even there? No, the only ones who really know are the ones that are there. <laughs> so, so. Uh, and they're the only ones to them, I guess. Absolutely, and and what and at the same time, if you think about it, what it is for us is, if we had all the answers, then there wouldn't be any reason to learn. And since we since we do not know, know all the answers, it gives us the human curiosity to say, I want to know more. I want to find answers, and that's what it's all about. Life is continual learning, and I share with everyone even. When we cross over, even when we go into our body spirit, these loved ones who come through from me are, are sharing with me, they're still learning about life. They're still learning about the values of life. They're still learning, you know, every, every moment. And that's what this is all about. And that's the same thing in this industry. We need to continue to keep learning and not think we have the answers. And I get the feeling that overall, for most people, uh, the best way to to start that journey toward answers is to, uh, instead of worrying about all the different equipment they bring along with them, I guess the best detector would be to use yourself. And if people can achieve life's gift like you have, and if they can achieve the ability to uh, better communicate with those who have passed on, well then, or, or utilize somebody such as yourself uh, to make those connections for them, then that's probably better than any blip on any device, better than any you know, weird anomalous photograph or, or any scratchy EVP clip uh, to make that one-on-one -on -one connection. Man, that, that is, that is a, I couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, I mean, I, and I share with investigators when I go, and I love working with them, but I share with them, I said, you know, it's great to have all these electronic tools and all these gadgets that you have. I mean, it just amazes me each and every time I go with the equipment that's out. But you start with, your, with the tool, that, the main tool, the tool within yourself. Go in, you know, before you go in, have the attitude that you're going to remain positive and you're going to go in to receive, you're going to receive messages. Go in with that attitude. The second thing is, is to, to, to when you go in to take control and to know you have control. And then don't go in there saying, well, we don't know if we're going to get anything or not. You know, go in with that attitude is we are going to find answers and then follow what you feel inside. That's your biggest tool. You know, I, I, when we go into historic places, everyone usually, a lot of individuals will share with me, Rick, when you go in these locations, like I was in a hotel uh, just several weeks ago, I immediately, when I walked in, I immediately felt to go down into this basement. I, I just knew something was sharing with me to go down this basement. 
and it was a large, massive basement, historic, historic building. And it wasn't because when you think of historic buildings, sorry, when you think of you know when you think of a historic building where uh, you know most people think the attic or the basement. But for me, you know, I was being led to the basement because of my feelings, because of what I was feeling inside, and I was being shared, with, you know, I was being told to go to the basement. Of Kushner, Colonel Fairhaven, Dartmouth, and New Bedford, we've got you covered. Our AM computer lets you fire off on its own. WBSM. Sorry, go ahead. That's, oh, that's, that's just okay. a little way of give, giving us the notice that we have about two minutes left in the hour, so. Okay. Well, I thought I was hearing voices. <laughs> 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 well, you probably were, but in this case, it was a computer. <laughs> well, why, but, why, yeah. I was say, why don't we leave it at that? Then we can we can pick it up in the second okay. hour, then, because this computer is going to get forceful on us. This is what happens when we're out of the studio for a few weeks. The, the technology <laughs> revolts on us. Well, we are going to take a break for the news, but when we come back on the other side, you will have your chance to speak with Rick directly and see if you can make that connection one-on-one. And uh, I know that there's people that have been anxiously awaiting since your last appearance to come on and speak with you. So you can do that. Our numbers are 508 996 0500-1877-996-1420. Those are the ways to get in touch with us. If you have any questions uh, beyond that, of course, you can always email us, SpookyCrew at SpookySouthCoast.com or jump in the chat room at SpookySouthCoast.com on the Spooky TV page. But again, the numbers for reading, 508-996-0500-1877-996-1420. During the break, please do check out Rick's website, LifesGift.com. It's linked up right with the front of SpookySouthCoast.com, so you can check it out, find more about Rick, figure out how to book yourself a reading with him, and uh, check out some of his other appearances that are coming up. We're going to take a break for the news right now. When we come back on the other side, uh, as I mentioned, more discussion with Rick, more of your calls. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the things that we have coming up here in October, and uh, it's going to be a special night because there's always that one person that's going to call in with the skepticism and not believe, and then they will. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more on Spooky South Coast. The station the South Coast turns to for news, sports, and weather. WBSM New Bedford, AM 1420, WBSM. From ABC News, I'm Chuck Secretson. Just out in the last few hours, more details showing a coordinated Taliban attack that did serious damage yesterday in southern Afghanistan. The assault on NATO's Camp Bastion killed two Marines, wounding nine others. Fourteen Taliban killed and one wounded and captured. Plus, six Harrier jets destroyed, two others damaged. They cost about 20 million bucks apiece. ABC's Louis Martinez in Washington. Camp Bastion is just huge. It, it houses 28,000 British and American troops in southern in Afghanistan. Um, but because it is huge, uh, it might raise questions about like, how secure the perimeter might be. That's uh, some of the questions that are going to have to be looked at uh, to see how these insurgents could launch such a coordinated attack. And those Taliban attackers were wearing U.S. Army uniforms. Wisconsin's Attorney General is asking court permission to keep a controversial state law in effect while it's appealed, the one that effectively ended collective bargaining rights for public employees. Governor Scott Walker calls the county judge who struck down the law an activist judge. Governor Walker is undermining, clearly attempting to undermine, confidence in the judiciary. Lester Pines, an attorney representing a teacher's group in Madison, Wisconsin. Governor Walker earlier to ABC affiliate WISN. The Attorney General of the state, uh, Jamie Van Hall, and the Department of Justice have made a very compelling case. We believe just as other challenges have faced up uh, to the challenge, uh, ultimately we're going to see this be upheld. Behind bars after an FBI sting, a Chicago teenager accused of plotting to blow up a car bomb outside a downtown Chicago bar. Adele Daoud say the feds was monitored for months and wrote online about a violent jihad and killing Americans, a Chicago neighbor of Dodd's. It's very scary, and it hurts my heart because I never would have thought, never would I have thought that, you know, that this is the way his man was going. Suspect has got a court hearing Monday. You're listening to ABC News. Hi, I'm Jay Farner from Quicken Loans. Today's interest rates are the lowest that we've seen in generations. The rate today on a 30-year fixed mortgage is an amazing 3.5%, APR 3.81%. Call us today at 800-QUICKEN. That's 800-QUICKEN. We'll help you keep more of that hard-earned money in your pocket where it belongs. 
Maybe that's why for the second year in a row now, J.D. Power & Associates rank Quicken Loans highest in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination in the nation. Here are some of the reasons why. We close many of our loans in 30 days or less, and we provide you with industry-leading online apps designed to guide you through the loan process with speed and ease. Again, today's amazingly low rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage is 3.5%, APR 3.81%. So give us a call today at 800-QUICKEN. That's 800-QUICKEN. Or visit us at quickenloans.com and find out for yourself why we're engineered to amaze. For J.D. Power and assistance and more information, visit jdpower.com. Call us for cost information. Equal housing lender. License to all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. An FBI team is on its way to Libya to investigate the killing of U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens and three others at the American Embassy in Benghazi. The man who served as a consultant to the anti-Islamic film that sparked violent anti-American demonstrations in the Middle East says he's received death threats. Stephen Klein lives in northern, or the southern California's Riverside County. The Press Enterprise newspaper says when a reporter went to see him, Klein answered the door of his home in Hemet with a pistol in his hand. This while the actual filmmaker who posted online the anti-Muslim video has been interviewed today by probation officers to see if his actions violate his five-year probation. Nikula B. Nikula has been convicted of various financial crimes. The officers say Nikula is not at home now, but at some undisclosed location for his own protection. Here are students who probably earn high marks for character. Think back to when you were in school. What would you have given to change a grade from a C to a B or maybe even go for broke and give yourself straight A's? If only you could get into the teacher's grade book. Almost 300 students in Utah public schools got even luckier. A software glitch in the state education department's computer allowed them the same access to the database as their instructors. Some students tweak their numbers, and in some cases are classmates, but most of them thought better about it and changed them back. Those who didn't, the schools know who you are. Daria Albinger, ABC News. This is ABC News. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-895-8035. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Donate your vehicle and you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-895-8035. That's 1-800-895-8035. Chuck Severson, ABC News. We will not be an easy target. We will never roll over and let pain plan our day. Or let an ache tell us what we can and cannot do. We will not linger on the sofa. Ask somebody else to bring us the mail. Or take the parking space closest to the door. But what we will do is take action. We will plan ahead. We will protect our bodies and fight back by moving. Lace up our sneakers and grab our tennis rackets. We will bowl. We will do our morning laps and bike ride through Saturday afternoon. We will walk our dogs around the block. We will pass up the elevator and proudly take the stairs. Because arthritis can't beat us if we beat it first. In the fight against arthritis, you need a weapon. What's yours? To learn more, visit us at fightarthritispain.org. This message brought to you by the Arthritis Foundation and the Ad Council. When do you crave the refreshing taste of iced tea? Twisted Tea wants to know. After mowing the lawn, at a barbecue, on a really hot day? Think about that same satisfying glass of iced tea, but with a kick. Twisted Tea is a hard iced tea that's made from beer, but it tastes like real iced tea. And nothing satisfies like an ice-cold <laughs> Twisted Tea. The next time you and your friends are looking for some refreshment, that you need a little kick, grab the Twisted Tea. The refreshing hard iced tea that tastes like real iced tea. Twisted Tea Brewing Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. Drink responsibly.
presents Spooky South Ghost with your hosts Tim Weisberg and Matt Constantine. Time, 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 Welcome back. Hour number two of Spooky South Coast. Tim Weisberg, along with science advisor Matt Moniz and Andrew Lake of Greenville Paranormal Research, who is in hanging out with us tonight. And uh, he just got back from a, a very successful event, uh, a book signing event, and that was at the new uh, Windwalker Healing and Learning yes, Center? Yes, it was, right across from the uh, cemetery. <laughs> well, they're doing good business one way or another. Yeah, I guess so. So uh, d- definitely check them out, windwalkerhealing.com is the website. Yes, correct. And, and, uh, uh, and there's all kinds of other th- stuff planned there, of course. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Uh, I have their address for you right here. I do know off the top of my head. It is at 1193 Ashley Boulevard, New Bedford. There you go. So check it out. Go visit Linda and Stephanie and tell them you heard about it on Spooky South Coast. We, we had cookies and, uh, and cider tonight. Whoa, whoa. There was cookies and cider and nobody yes. told me? Oh, man. Why do you think I showed up? That's true. <laughs> That's true. All right, well, we are going to be uh, joining right back in with our guest tonight, Rick Hayes. He's a paranormal communications consultant. Uh, you can also call him a psychic or a medium, and uh, he's a bit, uh, able to help you make connections with loved ones who have passed on. Uh, he calls it Life's Gift, and he's willing to share it with you tonight. The numbers to call in are 508 996 500 one 996 1420 and and. Of course, those phone lines will be open all night, and we're probably going to get backed up with people looking for readings. But if you do have a question for Rick about his abilities, about his experiences, uh, just about things in general, then you can also feel free to call in and ask those questions. But if you do have questions uh, and you want to get them answered and the phone lines are backed up, which is probably going to be the case, then you can always email them to us, SpookyCrew at SpookySouthCoast.com, or you can jump in the chat room on Spooky TV at SpookySouthCoast.com, the all-new SpookySouthCoast.com. Well, partially new. Same thing. We're just adding some new features and new content to it. New and improved. It's it's definitely improved, and we'll see uh, if I can keep going forward without messing it up even further. So, uh, so Rick, we were talking uh, in the first hour about uh, how you utilize some of these gifts, and I think it's important to, to note for people uh, that when they do call in, it might not necessarily mean that somebody's going to come through for them, and if, if it is, it might not be the person they were thinking was going to, right? Right, exactly, and, and you know, I'm not one of those that says, who do you want to come through, and what questions do you have now on the show, so it's a little bit different, but, you know, most of the time, I feel like they know better why they're coming through than we do, so I just allow them to do that, and also, there's times that may come through, and they may not acknowledge who they are, but they just want to relay a message. For example, I, I, as, as I was He's going on break. I felt like one of you, either you or one of your one of the team there, one of the studio in the studio there. Uh, I felt like I, I need to share. There's either a, a, something to do with a mountain. Either you're going to go to a a mountain uh, around a mountain, and I'm to share with you that when you go to this mountain, you're going to stop at a, at a at a location that's going to have a. It's almost like a post with a plaque on it, or something with a plaque ne- next to where you're standing. If you're taking a photograph, you need to take a photograph to the right. I don't know why, but I feel like you need to take a photo, photograph, photograph of the to the right when you do this, okay? All right. We'll keep that in mind. If either one of you guys go, I thought I was going to say that when you're coming around the mountain, she'll be riding six white horses. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was going to be like, well, Rick, you know, I'm impressed with your abilities, well, but that one's, you know, pretty well known. Well, well, I only saw five white horses. I don't know what happened to the last one. <laughs> he fell in a mud puddle. All right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if we're going to go with bad jokes, I might as well keep it going. All right. So, uh, again, uh, we, we want people, though, to, to you know, introduce themselves, say their name to you, and, and, and you, I assume that you need to have a little bit of a conversation with them, though, before things start to kick in. Right. And, you know, just, just say hello and your name. And uh, if you have a question, you know, we, we normally get the uh, questions, who, do you see anyone around me? You know, it, it, that's fine. But when you, if you ask a question like that, where it may take a little longer than than our time allows. So if you have a specific question, you know, especially on a show, that we're limited on time, just go ahead and ask the question. And also, two callers, remember that there'll be a number of people that want to call in and have their chance to speak with Rick. So uh, we are going to keep it tight. But, of course, that doesn't mean that you can't contact Rick off the air and get in touch with him and have a private one-on-one consultation over the phone. And I'm assuming we're letting them ask one question? Yeah. That would, that's yeah, a very good to keep it fair. limit to keep it to keep it down to, but of course, uh, and, and Rick, I know that you're you've got a very busy schedule, but you're also extremely flexible with people too, and being able to book those one-on-one phone readings for them. 
Yeah, the, the easiest way is just go to lifeskip.com. Right there, they'll see where it says contact. We made it very easy for them because there's actually on the contact page, you'll see a calendar on there that shows my available days and times that is available. So it's very easy for them. Beautiful. All right. Well, with that in mind, uh, we're ready if you're ready. Um, let's do it. All right. Here we go. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? My name's Darren. Hey, Darren. Now you are on with Rick. Hi, Rick. How are you doing tonight? Hey, Darren. Doing fantastic. I'm, I'm living life supernaturally. How are you doing? <laughs> doing great. Uh, I just want to say hi to the guys, Tim and uh, Brother Moniz over there. Great to speak with you. Hello. Thank you. Uh, my question tonight was, <clears throat> is it possible, do you ever pick up on if there's people, if you move into a home, let's say, and people have died there, and the spirit, can the spirits attach to you, and can you sense those spirits in a reading? Uh, I don't, I don't, normally, I don't, Dev, I don't like to use the word attached so much, uh, because it, it makes it feel like that they've taken some kind of glue and stuck to me wherever I go, but... Mm -hmm. But basically what it is, they're getting close to me. They're connecting with me. And, uh, if again, yes, if I go into homes and there's, there's activity in the homes, uh, you know, they know, the spirits, those in spirit know that I can hear and see them. So when I go in, it's, it's like it's like us going to a doctor. If you're, if you're feeling ill, you're going to go to a doctor. It's the same thing. When I walk into a home, uh, these, these, these old in spirit will know that I have this ability ahead of time, and they will immediately start connecting or, or what you share is attaching to me. Um, you know, it's just it's just a matter of communication, especially in the story. If I go into homes that has a lot of histories and a lot of experiences and a lot of memories in it, and as I share many, many times, who better to share with you the memories and experiences that occurred in this place, in the residence or in this location than those who've actually lived it? So they immediately are excited to share the message to share the experiences, memories they had there. Hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, that's definitely the feeling. I, I live in a house like that, and it's an old house, and it was actually owned by John Adams and John Quincy Adams at one point. Oh, wow. Not the house itself, but the land. And uh, I, I feel like there's some ancient history here. Okay, and, I uh, study exercise, mate. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> and there they are right there. Yeah, that's... <laughs> and, Dar and Darren, I do want to share with you the first thing I felt whenever I, we started talking was uh, I, I feel like there's maybe a, a group of pennies, either in your home somewhere, there's a group of pennies, and, I'm, and when I'm saying pennies, there's not just one, that, you know, you hear a lot where you're going to find pennies, I feel like there's a clump, a bunch of pennies you maybe have laying around somewhere, you may want to watch yep. those pennies, I think they're going to do some movement on that. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you All so right, much for the call. I'll check that out. Thank you guys have a great night. You too. I can bet it wasn't a hundred dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go right to the next call then. There's, there's not going to be a lot of uh, break in between calls for you, Rick, so just let us know if you need to take a moment. I'm good. All right, good evening. You are on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? Susan Phillips. All right, Susan, uh, say hi to Rick. Hi, Rick. Um, hi, Susan. I, um, I had a question, I guess. Um, I feel that uh, someone is trying to tell me something, someone that I've lost. It's very, very close to me that I consider, I guess, family, so to speak. Okay, uh, Susan, the first thing I felt whenever we started talking was uh, the illness is gone. So they immediately want to share with you that they're, if they were sick or they had an illness before they moved on, it is totally gone. And they want you to smile for that, okay? Is this a female connection? Yes. Okay. Does it make sense that she's wanting you to know right away the sickness or the illness is gone? Yes. Okay. Will you please start smiling for her more because she wants you to smile? Yes, I can. And, and also, they, they bring this to me a lot as well. They, she said there's a picture of, it may be of you and her, or especially with her that's got a huge smile on her face, and she's wanting you to, to take a look at that when you're feeling down, okay? I know exactly which picture it is. All right, all right, thank you. And also, I got the color red. I don't know if red was your favorite color. <laughs> or favorite color. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. See, you're already smiling. I can feel the energy. You're smiling, and she loves it, too. So, thank you so much. Oh, thank Keep you so smiling much for calling. Too. All right, you have a good night. Thank you, too.
Didn't that make didn't, guys? Didn't that just make you feel good when you, when you get a validation like that? Is that you know that well, it makes you feel fantastic. It, it's all. It does, but not only that, but the the speed in which you were able to uh, make the connection and, and the, the, seemed like the directness that the that the spirit came through with. I mean, is that because you can you, you know they can just tell that this is a person that needs that help and needs that closure? Uh, sometimes, but also keep also recognize this that when Susan, like for example, when Susan called in, that loved one knew that she was calling in what she was calling in about. And it's almost like having a, a three-way calling. You know, this this loved one was saying, you know, let's let's talk to her. I'm waiting too. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so. glad you're here then, because three-way calling is usually beyond the capabilities of our technology here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go right to the next call. <laughs> Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? Yeah, Mary. Say hello to Rick, Mary. Hi, Rick. How are you? I'm. I'm I'm living life supernaturally. Hi, Mary. How are you doing awesome. this evening? Listen, I wondered if you um, have any feelings at all. It's funny we're talking about an old house because I'm living in the old family house. But um, I've been, I don't know, I've just been wanting to hear from my sister. And I'm not feeling anything, and I'm just really surprised in this house. Well, first of all, just a lot of times, sometimes, a lot of times we want it so bad that we we tend to overlook some of the what some of the signs or some of the connections are trying to connect with us. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it is a lot. They are around you. Uh, I, I do want to share with you. You said sister. I also feel like there's there's two others with her as well that she's wanting to connect. She's share, sharing this with. And also, do you have an angel statue in your home? Yes. Okay. She's she's acknowledging the angel statue. So, um, so I mean, I need to acknowledge that in your home as well. Um, but, but just to answer your question, Mary, it is very, it, it's very, uh, okay. She said, don't forget your, don't forget her birthday, please. Okay. So. Um, I, I never would, but yeah, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, birthday must be important to her. <laughs> so, but, uh, again, if you're living in a family home, uh, just open your, allow yourself to open up and don't, don't try to push yourself into wanting it so bad that you may overlook it. Just, just let it happen. Just open it up and just let it happen. And once you do that, once you start opening up and just not forcing so much that you want to eat so bad that you overlook it, things will start, you'll start acknowledging, start feeling it. I really feel you're going to feel her around, feel them around more than you will see or hear any kind of sign. You'll get the feelings. Like if you go into a room, you're going to get a feeling someone's in there. Is, is there, is there, is there a, uh, is this a two story home? Is there an upper floor? Um, no. Okay, is there a basement then? Because I'm seeing yeah. two levels. Okay, I feel then she's wanting me to go up, so she's sharing with me to, if you want to feel connection there, I feel like and when you go into the front part of the home, you need to turn left, and it's the rooms to the left that you go, and I feel like you're going to have a stronger connection in that, in that area. Is that the bedroom area, or is that the kitchen area? Um, when I go, when I come in, Yes. Off to the right? Off to the left. Um, off to the left is, is the living room and then eventually the kitchen and the dining room or whatever. Okay, you might feel more of a connection with her in that area. Okay. All right. Uh, Thank you so ask, much. Real, real quick, Mary, I need to ask you, is, is your feet all right? Yeah, is, is your feet okay? Um, your toes or your ankle, your foot? Um, I have a bone in one of my toes that I'm having trouble with. Okay, well, you kind of keep an eye on that, and you might want to just, just keep an eye on it, okay? Okay. Nothing right. bad. Just keep an eye on it. All right. Thank you so much. Right. Thanks, Mary. Have a Thanks. good night. Okay. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Rick, I do want to ask you a question, though, based on, on that call. Is it is, is it kind of very commonplace for uh, spirits to go back to and, and hang around in the places where they lived? I mean, do they, is that where they, they feel the most comfortable? I mean, are they able to, uh, I guess, quote-unquote, come down from above to, to hang out in these places? Well, it's, it's, and if you think about it, I mean, if you've lived in a home, if you've lived in your home for, for many, many years where you've built experiences there, you've built memories there, and then especially with someone like Mary who's still part of the family, they're still going to be around that location, the home that has memories. Now, if, if someone if someone else had moved into this home, for example, 
Uh, you know, again, I've had homes where the the loved ones who's moved on is there to make sure the home is is respected, or they're making sure that the home is has is being created the same memories they had, and vice versa. Sometimes I will have uh, I will have loved ones who will share, you know, to tell them they met. For example, I had one a couple months ago where he he fell down this flight of stairs. And the, the individuals that were living in this home um, that had children, he was there to protect the children. And he shared with me, he said, tell them to be careful with the stairs to the down, to the lower level, which was the basement. And because he had actually tripped there and, and hit his head and moved on. And so, you know, they're there to protect and guide as well. So there's many reasons why they're there. Are they trapped there? Absolutely not. They, you know, I... If they can go through walls, they can go anywhere. Sure. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. And there's no uh, sandworms from Saturn outside the door like in Beetlejuice either. So. Yeah. Right. That's right. Let's go right into the <laughs> next call. That'll be uh, line three. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? Hey, guys. It's Luann. Hey, Luann. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Well, do you have a question for Rick? I know, I know. You want to know if your book's going to be a bestseller. <laughs> I don't know. Do the spirits actually know that kind of stuff? We don't need them to tell us that. We know. <laughs> well, I'm wondering if they're happy now. Uh, well, for, <laughs> well, first of all, Luann, are, have you finished your book? I have. I actually even have my review copy in my hands as we speak. Okay. Uh, is, is there... Uh, is, is there another book after this one? There will be, hopefully, a lot of books after this one. Okay, well, I need to share with you, you need to get started right away with the next book if you haven't already started. And I also, okay. need, to share, I also need to share with you that this next book may be a little large, be more chapters than this book. So you, I almost feel like you feel like there's going to be so many chapters in this book, it's actually going to be a little more than you originally anticipated, okay? So... And uh, and I can't wait to see it. But your your question is, are they are they happy now? Loved ones, you know, with just think about this. When we transcend into our body of spirit, we have left all the the emotions, what I call the earthly emotions. We've lost the, we have completely left the pain, the, the the depression, the sadness, the anger, the jealousy, all the earthly emotions that we that we learn here. And to better understand these type of emotions, they are left right here in the physical body. We transcend into a body of spirit. We understand these emotions, but we do not. We no longer. Uh, we no longer feel them, per se. So, but uh, happiness. What we feel there is complete happiness, love, a love that we cannot truly define here. And uh, you know, I, I've had those that say, has, "Have they ever come through and said they didn't like it there?" Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. Oh, well, that's a good thing. <laughs> right. Well, uh, before we let you go, Luann, do you have a, a date booked yet with Chris to come on the show? No, I don't. Well, he's in the chat room, so tell him to get on that. I have to go break out the whip. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, and good luck with the book. Again, it's called Dead Whispers, right? That's right. And it's hitting bookshelves soon, and you're going to be at our Fort Tabor event, hopefully selling copies. I hope so. That would be a good thing if I have them in hand by then. Let's hope. But either way, you know, we, we all love the fort. We'll help out any way that we can. Excellent. The team's really excited, actually, about helping the fort. Is it, it needs a lot of renovations, it's, which it's a shame that it's gotten to the point that it is, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll do all that we can to help. All right, thanks so much. All right, have a great night, Thank guys. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone. Bye, Lou. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, let's go to our next call, which will be on line one. Again, if you want to call in and speak with Rick Hayes, our number is 508-996-0500, Good evening. Oh. There we go. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Do you have your name, please? Yes, my name's Jack, and I feel as though I've got a couple of uh, loved ones around me lately, and I was wondering if there was a specific message that they wanted to convey to me. Hi, Jack. I'll never, I won't forget your name. That's my dad's name, so good to meet you. Um, 
you know, you said a couple. I want to share with you. This is really kind of, uh, I don't want to overwhelm you, but I actually feel like there's five around you. Uh, the two that, that you're connecting with may be uh, someone that you that you are closer to, but the other three are closer to them as well. I, I also feel like there's, uh, there's, there's a three, it's a three and a two connection, which is saying three females, two males, or two, uh, three males, two females. Uh, is, is your father still here, Jack? No, he's on the other side. Okay, I feel like there's a father connection here, so maybe a father connection to you. And uh, I don't know if this is one of the two you were, you were feeling, but uh, he's coming through stronger than right now. I, and I feel like he's coming through right now because there's something to do with your life. Either there's a transition in your life or something uh, something going with your life right now. I feel like since, since March of this year, and he's been he's been really trying to he's been really directing you right now since March, into March, into March. Getting a little feedback here from your computer there, Jack. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. All right, well, thank you for the call. Thank you. All right, have a good night. So that's what I sound like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, the numbers are 508 996 0500 1 996 1420. We do have a couple lines open right now, which uh, you might want to jump on that while you get the chance. Uh, we'll go right into our next call. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? Uh, Steve. Hi, Steve. Say hello to Rick Hayes. Hello, Rick. Hey Steve, how's it going? It's going well, sir. How you doing? Uh, uh, you've been hearing me tonight. I'm living life supernaturally, and that's that's the absolute truth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, I was just wondering if maybe um, I don't know. I, I have uh, trouble remembering things, but maybe something for a message for like my mom, who's a big believer. Okay. Um, well, first of all, the remembering things, don't let that get, don't, don't dwell on that, okay? Uh, dwell on what you do remember, because the things that you are remembering are, is more important right now in your life, all right? So don't, okay. don't worry too much about that. I also feel like there's a connection. I, I wrote down, when you started talking, I wrote down the word job. Are, is your career doing fine? Is it where you want to be? I. Uh, well, I, mean, I don't exactly know where I want to be, but I mean, I love my job and, and uh, I do enjoy it. Okay, what what do you do? What do you do, Steve? Uh, I'm in land title, abstracting. Okay, all right. Uh, I, I do feel that there's going to be a little bit of a transition there in your job as well, and I feel like that you need to know that you're going to be able to handle this, and don't you know you've got the you got the ability, so don't worry about it. Okay. So okay. everything's going to work out great for you. Now, as far as your mom, you're right. I do feel, um, I do want to share with you, I don't know if you knew this or not, uh, I feel like she had a little bit of time before she moved on, and 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 prayer was very, very important to her, as you said. Uh, I also feel like there was either a prayer said before she moved on or there was a prayer that she said before she moved on, and I hear her prayers were answered, so she's wanting to acknowledge that. She's also saying something about a, a flat the flowers. Uh, there's a flower connection that she's wanting to acknowledge the flowers that uh, either either someone brought to her or someone is laying, uh, is is presenting to her, and she's wanting to acknowledge these as well. Okay, well um, you're talking about uh, my uh, my mom has been, has been gone. I was just trying to see if there was a message for my mom, and okay. that might be a possibility that maybe my grandma is sending my mom a message. Okay, because i got to say it again, if your mom is, is into this, she's acknowledging again that the prayers, is, it is a mom connection, so it may, as you said, it is, mom, it is your mom, mom's mom, per, per se, if your mom's still here. But there's, again, I need to stress this, that there's something about prayers. Um, ask, talk to your mom and see if she had actually, when your grandmother, her mom moved on, if there was a prayer said before she moved on, or if she actually said a prayer with her. And also there's something about a flower, she, she she, she really enjoyed getting the flowers. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Well, again, the numbers are 508-996-0500, We'll go right into the next call. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? Uh, Phyllis. All right. Say hello to Rick. 
Hi, Rick. Hi, yes. Phyllis. Hi. I'd like to know if, uh, you know, if my mother could say where her rings are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Don't say the pawn shop, Rick. That'll be heartbreaking. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, has she been? Has she, has she been moved on more than three years? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, have you? Been, uh, there's a, there's a three connection here, and I don't know what the three is. How many rings are being are missing? Uh, probably three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I want to say I want to share this with you. She just took away once. I feel like if there one, there may be one that you will not find. It's almost like it's gone. And don't worry about this because it's just all material. But I do yeah. feel like there's two, there's two that's going to be together. And I and I really feel like it is. Um, I, I want to. I, I really feel like it's someone that's connected to her that has got has got them put away. And, and doesn't realize they actually have them. It is in a box with other things of hers. Uh -huh. So, uh, so you might want to. If there's some boxes that someone has kind of put in a closet or put away, you may want to look down in the box. I feel like they've just been put in there with some other pieces of, of and items. And and uh, I, I don't. Is one is one of these rings very sentimental? Or is some it was given to her? Or something was given to her? Uh. I believe so. She won one. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, and again, I, I really feel like that there is someone has them, but they don't really, they don't know they have them. It, it's been put in a box that uh, it's either forgotten they put them in there when they was putting things away, or it's, uh, you know, they, it isn't, they didn't do it on purpose is what I'm sharing is they, they're in there, but they just uh, not recognize. And also your oh. mom won't. If your moms want me to say that uh, you need to cook more. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. How could I cook more than what I do? <laughs> well, I think what she's saying is you need to cook some food and bring it down to the studio here. There you go. Oh, feed oh, the spooky oh. crew. There we go. There you oh, go. oh, I see. Yes. Let, me so know. I'll, let me know I'll be in the you. studio. I love to eat. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have Rick in studio that night. Thanks so much, okay. fellas. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Uh, we do have a whole bunch of phone calls lined up, Rick, but I want to ask you a question now. Myself and Chris Balzano are out uh, promoting our latest book called Haunted Objects, Stories of Ghosts on Your Shelf, and uh, available from Amazon, wherever fine books are sold. But uh, I do want to ask you, do you find a lot of times that there are uh, spirits attached to objects, especially ones like Phyllis was talking about, that have sentimental value? Yeah, and, and a lot of times, and I don't want to go against my buddy, uh, you know, he's a dear friend of mine, and, and I'm going to plug his show, Haunted Collector, Mr. John Zaffis, and uh, just, a, just a super great guy. And uh, kudos to John for, for renewing another season. But, uh, you know, I personally feel that objects are, we, there isn't a piece of the spirit implanted or imprinted into the, into the object. Everything is energies. Mm -hmm. We are all energies, but it isn't that we take a piece of our spirit and put it into this. It has a lot to do with, just as with uh, just as with Phyllis, there was some there was a lot of memories, a lot of sentimental, like you said, sentimental connection here. They want to you may don't may want to keep it in the family, for example. So they're going to be around that. They're going to be around. I was in a home just two days ago, and I had the uh, individuals. I asked her, did she have a kerosene lantern up in her bedroom, an antique kerosene lantern? She said yes, and I said bring it down. And first thing she did, she looked at me and she said, don't tell me there's a spirit attached to this. And I said, just bring it down. And she brought it down to me and I began sharing with her. This loved one came through, began sharing with me about this lantern. And after I shared this about the lantern to her and what it, how much it meant to her, she said, you know what? She said, after you sharing that with me, I will cherish this lantern even more. And that's all this loved one, this spirit wanted her to know. Is she wanted to know how much it meant to her. So it isn't that you know if we pick up a uh, if we pick up a lantern per se that there is a piece of that spirit imprinted into that. It is a, it is an energy. It is a feeling. It is an emotion. A part of that object. And uh, and John Zaffis actually wanted to stop by and, and say thank you for those kind words. Go ahead, John. Quite possibly the lantern could have had something attached to it. I thought I would talk to the family about removing the object. <laughs> that's that's An Andrew Lake with his uh, his awesome John Zaffis impression. John, John Zaffis uh, helped me out greatly with uh, my book. Um, I was having trouble finding places in Connecticut, and he told me, 
I've been a ghost hunter for 35 years in Connecticut. Nobody will let me in their place either. But he gave he gave me a, a few great tips, and they were uh, they made great chapters in my book, and I thank him very much. And can you just give us a, can you give us a thanks, buddy? In a John Zaffis voice. Thanks, buddy. There we go. John's a great guy. <laughs> he definitely is. One of the first guests we ever had on the show, and, and a good friend of the program as well. All right, let's jump right back into it. Uh, we're going to go to line two. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? Yes, my name's Suzanne. Hello, Suzanne. Say hi to Rick. Hello, Rick. How are you tonight? Hi, Suzanne. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing very well. I have a question for you. Um, I um, have been doing a lot of meditating, and um, after the meditation, I um, was looking through some photographs of a friend's family, and when I came across this one photograph of a woman, I got a direct message for him, and I'd never had that happen before. Um, I was wondering if there was any advice you could give me as far as uh, maybe hunting to this uh, ability that I've apparently uh, developed quite recently, actually. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, Suzanne, I'm so proud of you. You just keep keep doing what you're doing. You're opening up, you're evolving your, your abilities and, that you've been given within you, so I'm very proud of you doing so. Um, what my advice is, is first of all, I, I, I'm teaching, uh, I'm, I don't want to say teaching, but I'm sharing a class throughout the country this year and again next year and probably a year after that. It's called Believe, and, and the Believe class is to help develop your abilities. But the key, that, and it surprised a lot of people, because the key, the first part of developing your abilities is to break down everything you have, you have built up. In other words, you're, you know, we lost so much confidence in ourselves anymore. So start okay. building up, stop, start, stop, start building up your confidence more. Build your confidence up. Remove all the fears that you have. You know, there's okay. nothing to be afraid of. And then just follow your direction. And then as far as connecting, really, I, as you shared, you, you was meditating. Uh, continue to learn to do that and connecting with, you know, we hear, I, some people call it meditation. I call it connecting with your own spirit self. Mm-hmm. And just do so. And as you do this, you will develop more and more. Now, on these, on these photographs, I, got, I wrote down the number four. So if you still have these photographs, you may want to put them together in a, in a card-like stack and then go okay. to your fourth card and see if you get a connection to that, okay? Okay, great. That's great advice. And letting go of the fear is a very, very, very big thing that a lot of us don't do. So thanks for that advice. All right. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. All right. So that's one line open. Call quickly, 508-996-0500, 1-877-996-1420. See, this is, Rick, when we have you on, we call that as, uh, we call that as it's a, a half night off for the spooky crew because <laughs> well, everybody I, just wants to talk to you. Well, it's my pleasure. And, uh, you know, anytime you want you want to take some time off, just, just, call, your, just <laughs> call me. I'll be there. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, let's go uh, right, right into the next call, line one. Good evening. We're on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? Hello. Hi, Flo. How are you? Say hi to Rick. I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for accepting my call. I just wanted to know if anyone's trying to send me a message from the other side. Yeah, immediately before I wrote down a male, I, I do feel, when I when I feel connection, I usually feel it's a male or female connection. I feel it's a male connection. I also feel like I, I need to share with you that I don't know if you've been going through, um, I want to say you might have been going through some uh, some. Some medical, some medical things here recently, not major, but may, and he's wanting you to focus more on on building your your to take care of yourself. Okay, is this a husband or a father? Husband. Husband. Okay. Are you are you going through some medical things right now? Yes. Okay. He's right there with you. He's 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 telling me to share with you and always share with everyone. Listen to your experts. Listen to those in the medical field. Listen to those. In the, you know, in the law enforcement legal field, uh, listen to your experts out there. But he's he's sharing with me. He's right there with you. And don't be afraid. He's saying, don't be afraid. It's almost like he's saying you, you're kind of you've been kind of afraid of what they're going to say next at the doctors or, or yes. as you get this done. Don't be afraid. They're helping you, and uh, and, and just follow what they're sharing with you, and everything will be okay. Uh, is there a cane connection? Is there something to do with a cane or a walking something to do with a walking assistant? Okay, did he, did he have, did, was he okay walking? Yes, he was. 
okay, there is there is something to do with a cane, and this may be another person coming through for you. That you should yes, actually share. yes, my father. Okay, and I need to share with you. He, he put the cane away, threw the cane away, and as we're talking about your medical issue, medical uh, challenges right now, he's sharing with you that he got through his medical challenges, and he's, his cane's put away now. And uh, so you've got you've got some strong spirit spiritual loved ones around you that's really helping you right now. Uh, is this something that you've been quickly? Is this something you've been going through uh, more in the last four or five months? Yes. Okay. Uh, again, I I feel like it's you're going to be able to take control of this, and things are going to get get a little better. You might have you might still have to deal with these issues, these medical issues for a while, but I feel like it, you're going to be able to take a lot more control of them. Okay. All right. Okay. So I have a lot of spirits around me. Absolutely. You had two right now that really cares for you. And, uh, you know, I, and they come through. It's almost like they will be close. Those that are that are around you, will, they will come through in a time when they feel they can help you to cert, you know, in certain areas of your life. Right now, you're, this male, these two males are very close to you, especially your husband. He's very close to you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for the he call. Said, Yes, thank By the way, you. He, very very quickly, he said that he said to tell you. He said if you sit and relax, he said if you sit more, it will help. You said what? If you, you sit more, it'll help. Yes. I don't know if that means anything to you, but keep it in mind because it may. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Flo. Have a good night. Yes, you too, dear. Thank you. All right, uh, we, we are taking these calls fast and furious. The lines are stacked up. I know people in the chat room are saying they're trying to call and they're getting a busy signal. <laughs> All four lines are loaded. So uh, actually, we have one open right now, 508-996-0500, We'll try to get through all these calls by the end of the program, uh, but uh, we are down to about uh, 16 minutes left in the show, just so everybody knows. All right, let's go to the next line. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? Uh, Dixie. Hi, Dixie. Say hi to Rick. Pardon? Said, say hello to Rick. Oh, hi, Rick. Hi, Dixie. I love that name. <laughs> that was my father's nickname. I love that name. Can I have a general reading? Uh, well, I, I do need to share with you immediately as you begin share, talking, discuss, uh, connecting with me. Sure. Uh, I I feel like there there is a, you said yeah, it was your father that was giving you, but I feel more of a grandmother connection to you around you. Mm -hmm. Maybe a grand, this is a grandmother that has been with you for uh, for many years of your life, and I feel like she's still around. Okay. I feel, I also feel like she's, she can be very, uh, very sweet with a sweet demeanor, but if she needs to be firm, she will be. Mm -hmm. and, and she's been able to be there whenever you need some, needed some firm connection with you. Mm -hmm. So she's around you and also I got the I got the number I just got the number one four so this would be the number fourteen. Um, so there could be a fourteenth of a month or a fourteen connection to you as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Well hopefully that uh, that gives you something to, to think about Dick. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Good, good, good night. And uh, it is, it's rare to have somebody uh, in this area named Dixie, so I wonder if, uh, <laughs> it's usually usually down in more in your neck of the woods, Rick. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how come your accent's different than mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm in, I'm in radio, sir, I don't have an accent. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next call, line four. And I just hit my microphone with my headphones. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast. Can we have your name, please? Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Can you say hi to Rick? Hi, Rick. Hi, Jeff. How are you this evening? Good, good. Uh, I don't really have a question. I just was calling in to see if there's anybody in the local area that's around me. Well, if they're around you, they're going to be local. <laughs> <laughs> All <laughs> politics and ghosts is local. <laughs> uh, all cool. I gotta ask. I gotta ask you first of all. How old is the house that you live in? Uh, about twenty years old. Okay. Um, maybe thirty. Okay. Are you up? Are you, what? What part of the country are you on? You in? Uh, Massachusetts. We're in. We're in uh, Dartmouth, Mass. Okay. Um. Well, I, 
I'm not feeling like a family connection here. I feel like there's something. It's almost like you need to, uh, you maybe want to look at the area, the location that you're living in. Uh, I feel from time to time there is a there is a, a loved one. I call them a loved one. Other individuals call them spirits, examples, et cetera. I feel there's a loved one that is connected more to the location of the area in. Um, and I also feel like that, that there is, uh, it's almost like he's coming in through your back door. So do you live in a rural area or? Um, no, not really, no. Okay. Uh, I feel like he's, he, when he comes in, for some reason, he's coming in through the back area. And I'm saying he, so there is a male connection there. And I feel like this also, this almost has to do with, they show me the, 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 the depression era. So this would be in the 1920s. This connection, oh my gosh, I just got, I don't get names very often, but I just got a na name, Carl, K-A, it's K-A-R-L. So you may want to just do some, some research, some history, and see if there's a Carl connection in that area in the 1920s. Okay. All right. He's no, there's, it is absolutely no harm. No, Don't be fearful of it. Uh, I feel like sometimes when you feel like there's someone around, it is him just almost like passing through. Okay. Uh, but, but I, again, I'm getting a call with a K in connection there. All right. Thank you, Joe. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Bye. You too. Bye. All right. We'll go jump right into the next call because we're running short on time. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? Yes, my name is Victor. Hello, Victor. Can you say hi to Rick? Hi, Rick. How are you tonight? Hey, Victor. I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, I'm well, actually, and I gotta say, this is awesome. I love, I love hearing about you know what's going on. You know, and I listen to the show often. So, well, thank you for that. Yeah, but um, I, I'm sorry for that. But anyways, um, I've been feeling lately like there's some somebody around. Something's just something's happening. You know, so I was just curious to know if if anyone's trying to steer me in a certain direction. You know. Okay. First of all, Victor, do you have a sister? Yes. Okay, just one? Yes. Okay, because I want to acknowledge your sister as well, and I feel like this is also a female that's coming through. I don't, I, is, and I feel like it's on your mom's side. Is your mom still here? Yes. Okay, so it may be her mom. It may be a grandmother connection, but I feel like what you're feeling is uh, there's a grandmother connection coming through to you. I don't know if your mom's doing okay, if she's doing well, but it, it's almost your grandmother is around you. <laughs> That's who you're feeling. It okay. is your grandmother. And she's very, very strong. And you might start feeling where a stronger connection with her. Um, you might want to just, I, I also feel like you might want to talk to your mom if you have a close relationship with your mom, which I feel you do. Uh, you might just want to talk to your mom about her and get them some more, uh, just hear some stories about your grandmother. Uh, how long has it been since your grandmother moved on? Uh... A long time. It's been 20, yeah. 25 years, something like that. Yeah, she's really wanting you to know her, about her more, okay? Okay. Uh, so, so, but that she's the one that's helping you and guiding you. Uh, I will say this. I feel like that you need to uh, maybe start looking. I feel like after, uh, after almost, I'm feeling, hmm, I don't want to say January, it's closer to February where you might start seeing some changes in your life and, and I feel like you've had some bumps in your road here in the last few years, but I feel like things are going to smooth out a little bit for you as well. And I feel like it's going to begin toward the end of January, 1st February. All right. Well, that's great news. <laughs> All right. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, again, uh, we are running short on time, but if you want to try and get in, 508-996-0500, 1-877-996-1420. Now, Rick, I don't re pretend to even have the abilities that you do, but I will say this. I did try one time on the show to give somebody a, a uh, remote viewing of the location they were in, and I hit it on directly, or so she said, so I retired from making <laughs> such claims. <laughs> However, you know, it's good to be one for one. But uh, I will make a, 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 a psychic impression right now, and I'm going to say that we have a pirate on line one. Hold on. Here we go. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast of Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? Yes, it's the, the pirate. Hey, it's Mark. How you doing? Oh, great. See, I either have psychic abilities or we have caller ID at the station. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with caller ID. Say hi to Rick, Mark. I'm, hi, Rick. Hi, Matt. Hi, Andrew. Hi, 
Hey, Mark, I don't know why they had me on there. I mean, I, he just proves he has ability, so, you know. No, he has technology. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering if you can see anything about my, um, I've got a medical condition that uh, I was, the, the hospital is stumped. I wonder if you can see anything. Will it get worse? Will it get better? Okay, first of all, is this above the waist? No. It's, uh, well, it's tough to tell. It's, uh, it's, I, it's on the it, show, Mark. It's in my, <laughs> no, it's in my spine, I believe. Okay. Uh, I, I feel like if they're looking toward the lower, they may want to constant focus maybe a little bit above the pain. Yeah, no, they're, they're looking more the the thoracic spine. Okay. Because I feel like as they, as they look more up, I, I put an arrow next to your name going up. It's really funny. I put an arrow going up. And so uh, I feel I feel like if they uh, maybe focus on it again, they're the doctors listed them. But I feel like as they go up, they'll they'll get a better understanding, maybe a different uh, different perspective what's going on there, and it's actually going to help you. You've been going through this for for quite some time, though. Yeah, that's correct. But it's it's, it's not good any matter. And they had me on. Uh, I'm taking nine pills a day for it so far. Wow. Uh, have Thank you, you for keeping me in business. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Matt. Mark, have you had surgery? No. Okay. Um, I I, I want to say this again. I don't feel I don't feel like um, I don't. I still I'm going to share with you that if they they may want to look up higher up than where they they originally been looking. There's something above that is that is creating what the pain that you're having below. Well, they think there's uh, too much flow in my cerebrospinal fluid in my uh, thoracic spine, so you're you're pretty much right on the money, but okay. there's really nothing they can really do for it so far. But I just um, want to make sure they're on them they they're right what they're thinking. Yeah, they're they're right on it. They're, yeah, you just uh, be able to be some patient. I know pain is unbearable. But just uh, just hang in there, and I'm going to send you healing energies tonight as we're talking, and uh, you know just stay positive. And and they're on the they're on the they're on they're on track with what's going on. I, I don't see a complete heal for you, but I feel like it's, they're going to eliminate a lot of the pain that you've been having. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, Mark. It will hey, soon. Thanks. All right. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys. Right, bye. Bye. All right, we have uh, maybe just about four minutes left, but let's try and sneak one more call in, and that'll be line three. Good evening, we're on Spooky South Coast with Rick Hayes. Can we have your name, please? Uh, yes, it's Marlene. All right, Marlene, again, uh, we just have a few minutes here, but say hi to Rick. Hi, Rick. Hey, Rick, this hi, is Marlene. for me. This is for my friend, Janet. Okay. Um, Janet wants to know if you have any messages for her from Guy. Um, yeah, I do. I, I feel like, I feel like that, I feel like he's wanting to say he's, he's taking walks again. He's, wa he's taking, he's walking, he's taking walks. And I also feel like he's saying something about a picture that she's got up of him. And she may want to take that picture and, uh, it's almost like he wants her to take it to a different room. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but, uh. The, the biggest thing I'm getting from him is he's wanting to share with her how he's, I, I really feel like he just either enjoyed getting around, being able to get around, walk around, and he's doing, he's walking again. She's, he's wanting her to know that. All right. Well, hopefully that helps. Are you still there, Marlene? Yeah. Okay, I was going to say, hopefully that helps. Uh, but we are up against the clock, so we have to say goodbye. Thank you for calling. Thanks. All right, have a good night. And to everyone else, I'm sorry that we could not get to you. However, you can always go to Rick's website, lifesgift.com, and you can check out his schedule there, and you can make an appointment with him to have a, a private one-on-one -on -one reading, which, of course, I'm sure is a lot more intimate and a, and a lot more involved uh, than just what we're doing here. We're just giving people a little bit of a taste of what it's like. But, of course, when you talk to Rick directly one-on-one, -on -one, then you have a lot more time, and, and I'm sure that a lot more time means you have a lot more uh, opportunity to listen to what the Spirit has to say. Absolutely. I mean, if, if uh, you know, it, it's just an inspiration for me, and just tonight has been an inspiration, but in, 
in personal consultations that we create, you know, you're looking at an hour to two hours. So uh, there's a lot of messages that come through. But uh, it's great to be back on here. You know, you guys know that you make you call me and say I'm here. I'm here because I'm a, I am I am always in the house of Spooky South Coast. No, oh, well, thank you so much. We we appreciate that, and and thank you for making all of our listeners feel a little bit more better, a little bit more better, a little bit better. I'm a writer yeah. <laughs> about all the, the loved ones who have passed on, and 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 having those affirmations that they are still around us. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. We'll talk to you soon. I promise it won't be as long as it's been since last time. Please do. I, I, I'm, I look forward to hearing from you next Saturday. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a great night. Take care. Bye-bye. Again, that is Rick Hayes. He is a paranormal communications consultant. You can check out his website, lifesgift.com, and, and definitely book your reading one-on-one. -on -one. That's the way to do it. And if you're outside, you know, uh, if you want to go outside and see him in, in some of these appearances that he makes, he goes to a lot of conventions, a lot of different events. If you want to try and do it that way as well, uh, but of course the phone readings are always the, the most intimate way uh, because you don't have to worry about everybody else being around and, and listening to these messages. And, and who knows what's going to come through for you and, and how much better it can make you feel. All right, so again, lifesgift.com is his website. It's linked up on spookysouthcoast.com as well. We'll be back next week when we talk with Eric Altman uh, about Bigfoot and a variety of other things. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of shows booked on the horizon that are going to really stimulate the discussion heading into what we like to call our Christmas season, that being Halloween. And uh, don't forget there's two great legend trips events to keep you spooktacular throughout October. October 12th, right here in New Bedford, Supernatural Siege at Fort Tabor. And October 20th, Haunted History Night at the Fearing Tavern in Wareham. The tickets for each event are $99. You can buy them on legendtrips.com or right on spookysouthcoast.com as well. Please, please help us support these amazing historic locations and uh, it's your chance to really check out and get a behind the scenes look at these places in addition to hunting for some ghosts and having a cool time so uh, we'll all be there we hope to see you there as well and uh, once you do buy your ticket you can get the fan fabulous room deals that we have and uh, pretty soon we'll be announcing readings as well with tiffany rice and stephanie burke at those events so you'll have your chance for those too we will be back next week for anything spooky south coast always go to the website spookysouthcoast.com until then we want you all to stay spooktacular make sure your child is the station the south coast turns to for news sports and weather wbsm new bedford am 1420 wbsm from ABC News, I'm Todd Ant. The Pentagon has released new details on Friday's attack on Camp Bastion in Afghanistan, where two U.S. Marines were killed.